All right, we're gonna be focusing in on the unit circle and making some rotations and then locating points on that unit circle from a different reference point. So Teresa puts her pencil at point A and traces the unit circle counterclockwise. So to establish that direction, uh, remember counterclockwise is going against the normal flow of the clock. What is the radian measure from point B so our reference is gonna be point B. So that's gonna be our reference right there for each of the radians and degrees for which she traces the circle. The only one we're gonna focus on in this video is 210 degrees. So we're gonna focus in on degrees for this one. So the one thing we should locate is the idea that we are down here at point A and we know that that is three pi over two radians or we can consider it at 270 degrees, okay? But we wanna rotate 210 degrees. So let's go do that. I'm gonna start at A and I'm gonna start ticking off that um, value of 210. And I'm gonna do that in increments of 90 at first. So I'm gonna start and say, okay, well, let's go in this direction. When we get to B, we know that is a 90 degree arc, okay? And then we go another 90 degrees plus 90. And if we pay attention to where we're at, we know that we are at 180 degrees at this point. Now, 180 is pretty daggone close to 210 degrees. So let's find out how much further we still have to go. So I'm gonna take uh, 210 degrees, I'm gonna subtract off 180, and that leaves us 30 degrees still to go. So we're not gonna go all the way to the 180 degree mark or to where pi is located at over here. So let's go ahead and locate ourselves 30 more degrees. It's somewhere right in here. So I'm gonna write, okay, well that is a 30 degree piece. And that brings us to this location on the unit circle approximately. We'll call that point C. This is our finishing point. Now, what we wanted to do is, if we go back to the original question, it says, what is the radian measure from point B? So what we really need to do is we need to start at B and find this distance right there, okay, um, as a radian. So let's go ahead, and that's what we're going to focus in on right now. So let's go from B to C. Now, we know that this is a 30-degree piece. Okay, and we know that this is a 90. So we've got 30 degrees and we've got 90 degrees, a right angle right here, 90 degrees. Okay, and that gives us a total, uh, a total angle of 120 degrees. Okay, so we're going to be working with 120 degrees and we want to change that to uh, a radian that is traveled. Now, there's a couple ways we can do that. So we know that when we're dealing with these problems, we want to transfer 120 degrees over to um, radians, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and let's do that. 120 degrees, whoops, 120 degrees equals how many radians? Now we have some choices, okay? It depends on what we're looking for. We can do, 100, we can do an approximation. I can take 120 degrees and I can divide it by 57.3, which is going to be one radian. Okay, um, and we that'll help us to determine how many there are in 120. So we just take 120, we divide it by 57.3, and that gives us about 2.09 radians. So that says, okay, there must be approximately 2.09. 09 radians. Now, that's not exactly, remember, that's an approximation. So we can also say, well, we can say 120 degrees times pi all over 180. Remember, that is our converting to um, from degrees to radians. So degrees to radians is going to be the degree times pi over 180. That's another way we can do it. We can simplify. Well, we simplify take off the zeros because we're dividing by 10, we get 12 pi over 18. We can divide by six to simplify this. And that's gonna be 12 divided by six, which is two pi over three. Well, if I type in two pi over three, two pi divided by three, that also gives us 2.0. Okay. Um, and then of course we can come back to our picture here um, and I'm going to clear out some things and we know that we're going for 120 degrees and check it out. We can break it into fractions of pi. 
right? We know 30, if we do this, is there. We got 30, 60, 90, and then another 30. There's our 120. And you notice that we can keep doing that 120 until we get all the way out to 180. And as we do this in fractions, which we should know by now, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's pi over six. Okay, but we only needed one, two, three, four of them to get to 100 degrees, 120 degrees. So it's four pi over six. We can simplify that to uh, two pi over three. So lots of options in converting that to that 120 degrees over to radians. Now, the last part of this problem was to determine at what coordinates is Teresa located at? So if we go back, I'm gonna use um, Desmos for this section. If we go back and we're looking for the coordinates, it's really nice and easy. So we knew that it was 120 degrees. We also knew that it was two pi over three radians. And if we remember, the coordinates are simple. X, Y can be determined by cosine of the angle and sine of the angle, okay? And it doesn't matter which one we use. So I, all I need to do is make sure that I'm in the right mode. So if I am in degree mode, I just come over here and I say, well, the coordinates, let's type in cosine of 120 and then sine of 120. And you'll notice that the points as we put these in are gonna be uh, negative 0.5 comma 0.866. That's where we're located. Um, uh, that, those are the point coordinates on the unit circle. Now we can also do this in radians. The only difference is we need to make sure we are in radians. And you'll notice the answers change and that gets confusing, but we are in radians now. So I'm gonna type in cosine of two pi divided by three. You'll notice the same answer pops up that we have on the board. I'm gonna type sine of two pi over three. And notice we get negative 0.5 and 0.86. So I hope that helps you all uh, start to understand some of the rotations and referencing, um, finding radians and degrees on the unit circle as we rotate around.